Hello, I'm Professor Tim Spector from the Zoe Health Study, and this week I'm going to give you the latest on COVID rates, which fantastic are right really coming down. So good news as we go further into autumn and potentially good news for Christmas. I'll be sharing some great insights we've discovered thanks to your incredible contributions to the blood pressure study and the big diet study. And finally, telling about our latest project you can get involved with next Monday, the 24th of October, what we're calling the big if study. But it's all completely free and is going to be massively important. But first, let's look at the good news for once about the COVID data, because we're seeing rates falling and they're currently at 215,000 new daily cases, which is down from the peak that you might have saw, which was like in between our, our last uh, video on about the 11th of October. It seemed to peak at just under, over uh, 239,900, uh, and that's 10% down from that peak. So it's quite a, uh, a rapid decline, which um, bodes well for the future. Um, not out of the woods yet, because that still means there's lots of people hanging around with the virus that could be infective. So it's down. It's, down a little bit, only at one in 21 people. So lots of people uh, still potentially coughing, et cetera. But in some parts of the country, the R rate, which you all know by now, is down to about 0.9. So I'm expecting this trend to continue into November, uh, December, uh, potentially good news for Christmas, which uh, was messed up quite a lot um, previous years. And, um, the ONS data that gets into the mainstream media is about 10 days behind us. So hopefully next week they'll show uh, either a plateauing or a slowing down as well. Now, one reason that uh, this decline is earlier than I was telling you is because that was based on forecasts uh, that used uh, what's called uh, contact rate data between people how much people are mixing together and how easily viruses are transmitted. And the reason this is lower than those peaks, which should have gone much higher, is that we're still at around 80, 85% of our contact rates compared to where we were pre-pandemic. Many people are just not getting out and mixing as they were before. This has the good news that that means there's less COVID and less colds being transmitted. And uh, again, we're seeing colds coming down as well. Um, so talking about the COVID symptoms, um, they're pretty much unchanged, but uh, I like sharing it with you because uh, you guys need to be experts when people still uh, have the wrong advice. Five common symptoms are sore throat, runny nose, blocked nose, headache, and a dry cough. And uh, although I did mention sneezing was slightly more common if you have uh, a cold than COVID, but it's still pretty common. About 49% of people have it uh, with COVID. So not a particularly reliable um, sign, but it misleading mislead anyone there uh, when, I, when I started sneezing with my cold. Um, I think importantly, fever, that's high temperature, no longer features in the top 20. And it really is a complete waste of everyone's time to be screening uh, workplaces and care homes and things for fever at the moment. Um, don't forget, if you do have any of these symptoms, get a test and log it on the app using the profile tab, which has changed a little bit. OK, uh, big diet study and blood pressure. Um, amazingly, 96,000 of you have just completed the big diet study telling us all about your habitual diet and this allows us to get some really interesting insights from your data and by comparing this with the blood pressure study data where many of you have very kindly got hold of a blood pressure machine and told us what's going on we can see what happens uh, the the interactions between diet and blood pressure and you can look at this graph now you can see a, a couple of obvious things yes um, the highest one, obviously, is if you've been diagnosed with high blood pressure. Uh, but after that, age and your body weight are the two biggest factors. You can't change your age. You can to some extent change your body weight. But um, 
the other one that's preventive is obviously if you take blood pressure medicine, that's uh, going to be helpful. And uh, being female helps you as well. Uh, men always have higher blood pressures, although it does go up at the menopause, as we've discussed. Alcohol is generally negative for blood pressure. And the one thing, so you can obviously reduce alcohol consumption, that uh, is something you can do. The other thing uh, comes around this, this finding here, potassium. So people who have a lot of potassium in their diet have lower blood pressures. And studies have shown this is more important than salt. Uh, when you, 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 when you add potassium uh, supplements rather than reducing salt. And so this is actually quite a, a major finding because this is something all of you can do. You can actually improve the uh, potassium in your diet. Um, and the other, th the other things here are uh, physical activity helps a little bit, stopping smoking and uh, HRT, which we'll probably discuss more of uh, in future weeks. But looking at the foods that contain this high potassium, which many of I didn't know about all of these. Um, I thought it was just bananas, which um, tennis players eat. But uh, it turns out that the top 15 ones are things like yeast extract, which vegans use uh, to sort of mimic cheese. Uh, potato crisps, now that's an unlikely one, isn't it? Um, if they're fried in sunflower, which most of them are, so good quality potato crisps have a lot of potassium, and uh, obviously they have a bit of salt in them, but um, if we think potassium is more important, that's really interesting. Tomato purees, um, power shakes, uh, pistachio nuts. I love pistachio nuts. And um, again, really good source of potassium. Um, and uh, coffee whitener, interestingly, don't really like that stuff. Um, dried raisins, dried fruits, dry uh, prunes, uh, other pumpkin skins, quinoa. And oh, if you like an exotic um, snacks, Bombay mix, fresh parsley, uh, all brand type cereals and almond butter. So a very diverse list of things that uh, you probably hadn't thought about, but just makes people think differently. But generally most um, plants, vegetables uh, and, and fruits do have uh, pretty good levels of potassium in there. And um, we will be giving you recommendations on foods that help you if, if you're in this study. And we're also hoping to be giving you individual feedback on your particular diet and what you need to change uh, to improve. So really important to try and uh, fill in those dietary questionnaires uh, if you can, if you wanna get the most out of it. Now, the big IF study, we're launching this uh, a very exciting study on Monday, and it's gonna tell us how intermittent fasting works for you. And by you doing it, then we learn about its use for everybody. It's the largest ever clinical study of its kind, looking at uh, whether just changing when you eat, not what you eat, can affect your mood, your energy levels, and much more. And to take part, you need to download the app first. That's the Zoe Health Study app. And opted to be into this uh, health study research with a bit of consent. And then you also need to be based in the UK and to be the main app user. You can't do it for kids, etc. cetera. Uh, keep an eye on, on the app to join in next week and be one of the first to, to get going on that. I think it's a really exciting initiative because it's not gonna work for everybody and we do wanna find out who it works for and the best way to advise people. Uh, so in conclusion, COVID cases are slowing down. This is the end of this October wave. We're uh, a week past the peak now and I expect this downward trend to continue until uh, the forecast suggests that it's going to come back in January. Um, for your health, eating more potassium rich foods can really help lower your blood pressure. We'll continue to look into this and get you more detail um, and give you recommendations. Um, join our new study, the big IF study from Monday 24th. Do tell other pe people um, as well. We want this to really be a massive community science project, uh, discover how it really affects us. It'd be great to get a million people doing this. If you can think of joining from next Monday, you'll get much more out of it if you also fill in the big diet survey. Uh, do complete it. 
So that's it from me. Please remember to uh, like and subscribe to the channel, share the app with friends and family as usual, and finally, support science and keep logging. Thanks again.